Hello, my name is Mike and I'm one of the in-house education consultants here at The Profs. And in today's video, I get to talk about how you do well in the physics personal statement. So instead of looking at my top tips, I'm actually just going to get into exactly what you cast are asking. So I'm going to be looking at my laptop a little bit today just to get a few bits of details as well as a few interesting examples we can have a look at later. So the three questions that you can pose this year in opposed to what used to happen with the personal statements where you got to write an essay of 4,000 characters are the following three questions. So they are fairly new. I'm just going to be reading them out from my computer. Number one, why do you want to study this subject or this course at university? I'm sort of paraphrasing, but that is exactly the topics that question one is asking for. Getting to number two, how have your studies prepared you for this course? And finally, number three, what have you done outside of your studies to prepare for this course? So very similar sounding questions. There's possibilities of lots of different topics overlapping depending on what you want to answer for these. So we're going to go for these in turn, see what typical options come up, and hopefully that can give you a better understanding of how to approach a personal statement in general, let alone a physics one. So getting into that first question, let's have a look at it. Why do you want to study this course or subject? What is it showing? Why is it even here? It's showing that you have a deep intellectual interest in physics beyond liking science at school. So that's a really, really key thing there. We want some evidence that you like physics beyond what is learned at school. What does that involve? Well, that can involve lots of academic readings and Oxford and Cambridge both have extensive reading lists for you to be able to engage with to know what kinds of examples of books are really, really good to read. So I might be mentioning for a question like this one, maybe two books if it is related. Maybe I could talk about something very, very briefly in terms of how I appreciate the subject. So maybe it's specific topics and questions that drew me in that might lead me into some reading or might lead me to a particular talk. But action speaks louder than words. So if you've got an example to back up your thoughts, then that's going to carry over very well. And then perhaps you have some more intellectual reasons for studying physics um, involving the understanding of the nature of the universe or the um, sort of the mathematical ele elegance of, of models used to describe what is happening in the universe in particular. So we'll go into perhaps uh, into an example and it'll be interesting to sort of see and I'm not saying because this is early days as this is exactly what we want to see in a statement but we can see a lot of the reasoning going into a question like this being demonstrated. So for example, I'm drawn to physics because it seeks to explain the universe through elegant fundamental laws. The idea that equations like Maxwell's or Schrodinger's can describe vast comic events or quantum uncertainties is deeply inspiring. My fascination with unifying gravity and quantum mechanics drives me to study physics at a deeper, more rigorous level. It's a really, really good way to be able to start with a bit of your passion there. I think one way we can make something like that even better, they mention Maxwell or Schrodinger's equations. Maybe that you could discuss some academic reading, which actually shows what Maxwell and Schrodinger were able to achieve. How did they feel about each other historically? Um, maybe that leads to an element of science that you would have been exposed to in the middle of a, of a lecture. And perhaps then you get to learn about the real world impacts of something like physics in this context. So again, actions speak louder than words, but this is the question where you really want to demonstrate your passion for the subject. If, well, ideally you want to do it with every question, but this is the best question to start doing it. Getting into question number two then, how have your studies prepared you for this course? So this is really, really huge. Where are the traps with this? We don't want to be talking about our A-level or IB grades in particular. There are other places on the UCAS application where you can do that. Don't waste your time necessarily with that. You can talk about instead maybe your choices of A-level very, very, very briefly. But I might want to be talking specifically about my EPQ or my NEA if I'm doing something in comp uh, computer science to be able to back it up if it's something in relation to physics. So maybe I'm looking at creating physics simulations. 
I know there are, are competitions that you can get into as well. Maybe you're part of the, the physics, mathematical or, or physics or mathematical Olympiad, either one of the two. Um, maybe you are involved in um, other kinds of competitions that give you really open-ended questions that you can begin to explore as if you were a university student. Um, so already that gives a lot of thought in terms of, you know, how should you be writing a personal statement or this part of the personal statement, the new structure, with actually a lot to be able to say. We'll go for another example, give a bit of an analysis with this. So through my A-level physics and maths, I've explored topics such as mechanics, quantum phenomena, and fields. Studying projectile motion and SHM, or symbol harmonic motion, introduced me to modeling physical systems using calculus. I particularly enjoy deriving kinematic equations from first principles, which connected mathematical logic with physical reality. My EPQ on gravitational time dilation allowed me to research Einstein's field equations and Schwarzschild metrics. In my opinion, I'd say this is a better question two answer than the question one answer that we gave earlier. So what is it doing right here? It's not getting too much into specific grades, but it is answering why they chose the A-levels they did. If there are optional aspects of the A-level, what are those options, which is really, really huge. And how did parts of the A-level inspire them to be able to calculate or look into other things? So. We see here a general progression to doing an extended project qualification, feel free to talk about that, where they looked into gravitational time dilation, that's something to do with special relativity, an optional topic as part of A-level physics syllabuses, or in many of them, and then it led them to further research. Maybe if they could get into their research a little bit faster, then that would actually talk about something or get into something a bit more impressive with their character. So. Even with something like this, there are improvements that can be made. I would say maybe getting into the research faster and being more specific on it would be act as a greater example of how they are looking at physics beyond their syllabus. Let's get into the final question then, shall we? What have you done outside of your studies to prepare for this course? What's the goal of this one? You want to prove here that you're a physicist at heart. You are curious, you're proactive, and exploratory. This is the last question that you have to really sort of demonstrate your passion for the subject, as well as anything else that you might be doing here. And I would say here, you wanna be talking about books. So for instance, six essay pieces by Feynman. Well, Feynman is a great scientist, but he's also written a lot of great works. Brief History of Time by um, uh, Stephen Hawking, uh, and maybe The Elegant Universe. I wouldn't be reading loads of books and then trying to say I've read everything. I would only be looking at particular choices that match your narrative. Um, online courses, maybe with Brilliant, with MIT, I know they have some online courses, uh, Superprof or Isaac Physics, which have a lot of open-ended physics problems there. Competitions, we already talked about the Physics Olympiad, the Senior Physics Challenge. So we are starting to hear about overlap with these answers, but make sure that in each of these questions, you're not speaking about one thing in one question and then repeating it in another question too much. Don't worry if you're not gonna have the room to be able to do that so much, but we are hoping to be concise with our experiences. Have you done any experiments at home? Have you attended any university masterclasses or, or gone into any special museum trips or science fairs? Or it could be across disciplinary interests of some sort, maybe physics in another subject. So in the spirit of this video, we're gonna go with one final example and we're gonna analyze. Outside school, I've explored physics through books like Feynman's Six Not So Easy Pieces and Green's The Elegant Universe, which introduced me to relativity and string theory. Using Arduino, I designed a project to measure and plot changes in temperature across time, applying statistical analysis to reduce noise. I've also used Isaac Physics to tackle problem-solving tasks, improving my confidence in using multiple physical laws in a single calculation. So what is it doing well? It's mentioning a lot of really relevant extra things in terms of this person's general interest in physics. Well, what are they not doing so well? It feels like a list of achievements right now. Um, so you could change the writing slightly to say, well, maybe 
Having read books like Feynman's Six Not-So-Easy Pieces and Green's Elegant Universe, um, I was introduced to relativity and string theory, which actually inspired me to design a project in Arduino to measure and plot changes in temperature across time, for instance. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you should be doing a project, um, perhaps, in, of one particular project over another, but it's really good if we can get a sense of cause and consequence so that's one principle that we should be having within something like this. And we also want to make sure that when we are writing, that we are actually doing more demonstrative writing than we are doing in explanations. So there's a lot that I, I can already read in subtext. I don't need every single bit explained to me. If you're already doing something as pieces of evidence, then I don't need to necessarily be told what I can discern from that in particular. So focus on what events in physics or what events in your learning have led you to other amazing supercurriculars that you can add to your overall application. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear some discussions from you. Um, otherwise, if you think that this video is going to be useful for your friends or family, please share it. If you've liked it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to get in touch with a tutor like me or any one of our subject experts on this, then please have a look at the information on screen and make sure you get in contact. And as always, best of luck with your application.